Leela Singh, your podcast host, and I'd like to welcome you to the My Brand HQ podcast, all things personal branding for career acceleration. This podcast is for talented, ambitious career professionals like you who are wanting to be perceived as a thought leader, to be top of mind to those that matter, and to make an impact and stand out, be that in your team, your organization, or your industry and to be inspired by other successful leaders. I will be interviewing high achieving career professionals who have carved out a successful career in their field and are open to sharing their career journey, their challenges, their learnings and insights with you, someone who is looking to establish your personal brand and accelerate your career. Through my personal branding and coaching practice, I enable career professionals primarily in the technology industry to earn more money to increase their salary. In fact, I spoke to all of my past clients that I've worked with over the several years and learned that actually overall, they've received an average of 47% increase in their package. Would that be a great place to be? They've also all achieved at least one, if not more promotions or moved on to a higher level in their career at another organization. And they're looking to advance their career while showing up as the best version of themselves. If this sounds like for you, then do reach out to me and let's have a chat. And why do I do this? Well, during my corporate career spanning 25 years, I quickly realized that hard work alone was not enough to get me to where I wanted to be and the success that I strive for. My belief is that hard work coupled with creating and establishing a strong personal brand can both influence and accelerate your career and get you to where you want to be. In today's My Brand HQ podcast, we're going to be speaking to Danette Copestake. Danette is an experienced technology consultant with 26 years project change management and delivery experience for high profile clients, ranging from the financial services through to the UK government sectors. Danette is a change agent whose infectious can-do leadership style ardent approach to quality assurance and customer satisfaction drives diverse teams to deliver large-scale transformations. She is passionate about new technologies, innovative and agile ways of working, and includes cloud computing, mobility, and digital workplace. She's an advocate for women in technology and recently won the CIO London's Prediction Panel 2019. In today's episode, Danette will be sharing with us the female trailblazers who have gone unrecognized and yet had a major influence on her career and her approach to her career. She'll also share her passion for tech and innovation and the exciting initiatives that she has in the pipeline. The importance of effective communication, confidence and positioning yourself well for the next opportunity, so all things personal branding, and the many reasons why more women should be encouraged into the technology industry. So let's head over and hear what Danette has to say. Hi, Danette. Welcome to My Brand HQ. It's lovely to have you with us today. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you, Leela, for having me. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. I'm excited about this. So let's just dive in. Um, I know you, you've got a very um, broad career, let's say, in terms of all the things that you have done. So tell me, when you started out, when you embarked on your career, did you have role models or mentors that kind of guided and supported you? Yes, I, I, in my early days, um, I, I was in the, in the Rens, actually, in the Royal Navy, and I had a lot of role models, and mainly men, actually, who, who kind of mentored me over the years. There wasn't actually that many female ones, really, in, the, in those sort of early days. Um, but, um, and I think what I did is I tended to, to, to look at people who were sort of historians, you know, Amelia Earhart, uh, Violetta Chabo, people who, I, who inspired me, you know, as female trailblazers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... Um, I think that's what gave me almost the impetus, really, to to look mentor and to realise how important the whole mentorship um, program is for younger women. You know, because and especially now later in my career, I look back and I'm always, you know, very a big advocate, really, of, of supporting that. Okay, fantastic. And how do you felt feel that that kind of supported you to to move forward in your career? So, so with, you mean with the mentorship? Yeah. Or? Yeah. So, so yes. Yeah. So no, I think that, um, I mean, obviously at the middle of time I did have, I was very privileged to have a coach and I just felt that it gives you that confidence, you know, um, that sounding board 
um, to, so when you do question yourself and no doubt you know within within the, the IT careers and the challenges that we all face it's always nice to have someone to you know to be a sounding board to hear your your thoughts and to, and to give you some guidance yeah I absolutely agree with you definitely it's all I always advocate people having a mentor to, to just give them that guidance to, to the next level and and bring that back to you actually you know you have taken a leap of faith through your career so tell me a little bit about that and, and how or, or what kind of pushed you to do that? Yeah, so I, I worked very much with the big, similar to yourself really, working for Hewlett Packard and EDS, many years working for the big corporate banks. Um, and um, I was made redundant in 2013 and it gave me an opportunity really to, to do something that I'd always wished for really, which was to have my own sort of consulting business. And, um, and so yeah, I was very lucky um, to have um, a, a contract initially and um, that sort of gave me a good baseline, a good foundation to continue what I was doing and I've been doing that since 2013 so yeah very very happy with that and I know you're very passionate about technology as well so in, in terms of that what aspects of that do you really focus on what is it that you're passionate about yeah so I'm I'm, I'm very much into the cloud computing and sort of data analytics space at the moment um, and um, I've, I've just sort of set up a little uh, innovative hub innovation hub really uh, called Hypatia um, and Hypatia, by the way, was a, was a, a the daughter of um, the Theon of Alexandria. So she was a, a female before her time many years ago. So I, okay. I used her as a bit of a mentee, really, as well, because a big advocate of trying to get females into technology. But yeah, so, so basically, we're, we've, although we're a cloud computing first with, with companies, we've actually started to delve into app application, software application mm -hmm. development. Um, and literally just recently, I'm, I'm launching um, a new initiative, which is to do with pubs, finding um, pubs. It's called iPub Beacon. Um, and it's a a, yeah, it's a bit is of a... Is that summer. something you've started working on during lockdown? Is that something that's quite... It is, it is absolutely, yeah. So I, I left my current role. Um, um, I was working at a big financial services company as head of IT testing in, um, in March. And um, I basically have set up but it gave a bit more traction to Hypatia, this innovation hub. And we then started to do a couple of initiatives and this iPub Beacon is one of them. Okay. I'm quite excited for so it. So tell me a bit more about that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, so what, so what it is, I mean, again, it was really, um, it, it, it's basically to provide sort of customers with a, a sort of a finding locator pub, but also an order and pay loyalty app, you know? So effectively what my, my idea is that um, pubs, uh, hospitality venues, will reach out and perhaps use this app um, as a way of facilitating their business, you know, making it more optimized. And also in the current sort of, you know, bubble of social distancing, it helps not having to go to the bar. You know, you can pay from your phone remotely, contactless, and all the benefits that sort of cloud computing brings you, you know? Wow, that, that's, that sounds just so relevant and needed right now, particularly in the current climate. And, and just for our audience, you know, we're going through the, the, the lockdown, COVID, and hopefully now slowly coming out of it. But I think based on what you're explaining there, that is something that businesses will really, really need to, to keep them, you know, afloat. And, and is there anything like this at present on the market or is this quite a new thing? Yeah, well, I think there's quite a lot of, you know, there's just, there's quite a lot of the little apps out there, but I think my, what my USP really is uh, perhaps going to be about the data analytics, you know, giving back, um, right. using data, really, they call data the new oil, you know, um, uh, and predictions, you know, helping um, the publicans or, or the venue owners uh, understand more about their customers so that they can offer loyalty, you know, discounts and, and offers and things. Fantastic. So, yeah. And is this something that's about to go live? Is it quite, is it you know, already available? Yes, so it's already on the Android as a, as a shell. Um, obviously the pubs don't open till the 4th tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I think it's going to, um, it, 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 it's in progress at the moment, you know, we're, we're very much early stages, but um, I've had a good, a good response so far, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and yeah, so it, it's just a new way of working, a new way of being productive really, is yeah. what, what I'm offering. Yeah, and a new way of keeping businesses moving forward with the times and with the, the current climate that we're all having to adjust to as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. How exciting. And, and so tell me then, for you, what is it that drives you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What is oh, your purpose? Yeah, well, I've always been a bit of a nerd. I always loved IT. But there's a special word, actually. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called the Japanese concept, ikigai. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. It means the reason for being. 
Um, and, and it's exactly as you said, you know, the word refers to having direction or purpose in life. Um, and my passions are around IT cloud. You know, I love what I do and I love trying to digitize people's dreams and visions, you know, to try and making them be more productive and making things that are quite monotonous, monotonous and boring to be autom automated so that they can then focus on, on the, the nice things of being creative and passionate about what they want to do. You know, mm -hmm. they want to spend more time on the golf course or down at the spa, you know, they can do all the, you know, the, the, the mundane stuff can be automated and digitized. And so that's what I'm about really, that's what, and, and being on that journey, sort of to help my customers with that is, is really what makes me tick. So yeah. Amazing. That's, that's so exciting. I love it. I love it. And the fact that you ventured out on your own to do this, and I know you have a team around you supporting you with it, but I think, you know, the courage it takes to do what you're doing as well. When, you know, you've come from like me, that background of having the some somewhat secure yeah. job, you know, that career, uh, it, it's a really courageous move. That's fantastic. And, and so I, I'm an advocate of, of personal leadership. I, I believe that we, it's important for us, particularly if you want to advance your career or to, to grow a business, to be able to lead yourself. Um, and, and so for you, what is the one thing that you think exemplifies leadership? Because clearly you're, you have a similar mindset. So, so what, what are the, what's the most important thing do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think in this, especially in this current climate, I think, you know, it's being a good listener, it's being a very good communicator, actually, you know, a collaborator, I imagine, you know, it's, it's having that sort of vision, that all-round vision, um, and to be, empath to be an empathetic leader, you know, I think too often sometimes leaders will kill people's passions because, you know, their approach to it, you know, they, they want things to be done and they're not willing to almost like, you know, work alongside the people to actually really understand what makes them tick. In, a, in order to make them achieve their aims and goals, you know? Um, and so I think communication to me is probably quite high up on that list to be a really good communicator as a leader, to make sure that your staff is on the journey that you're going with is, is, is really core cool to achieve your aim. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And, and so for people listening to today, what advice would you give them about accelerating their career? What things do they need to focus on? Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of it is um, perhaps collaboration. You know, don't be siloed. Get out there and um, and talk about your dreams. You know, and 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 and, and when you get buy-in from people, I think that also helps. You know, sometimes reaching out for people, even if they don't volunteer mentorship. You know, look for people who you aspire to, and 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 look at them and look how that how they've achieved their their goals, um, and and follow. You know, and and try and get there and seek their guidance. Or even for yourself, you know, get a personal coach to kind of give you guidance who've gone through those journeys. Because sometimes, you know, they might, they, they might not have gone on that journey, but they can make you think about what you need to, 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 to really consider so that you can achieve those, achieve that success. Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. And so, again, you know, I, I know you're um, a, a strong advocate of, of women in tech. So... Why do you think we're struggling so much to encourage more women into technology? Yeah, I, I think it's again mindset. I think it is changing. I think it's better than it was without a shadow of a doubt. But I think the, you know, I think, and it even goes back to what you were saying in my previous question. I think females, they need to be, they need to be more visual. You know, they need to be more bold and passionate. Um, even, if it's not, even if it's not in their comfort zone, you know, they need to, and I think you said it on your TEDx thing, you know, they need to step up, they need to communicate. And they, they always need to try and be a role model themselves, you know, and, and, and take accountability and ownership. I think it's great to have male allies, you know, but it's actually male advocates that we need. You know, men take action and, ch and champion women in leadership roles by sponsoring and mentoring them. But in essence, they need to encourage it within the workplace, with, you know, to encourage diversity. But above all, they need to lift women because I think women need it, you know, I think there's so much, and I, you know, this is a big topic, and I don't want to go into it too much here, yeah. but I think, you know, it, it starts from even childhood, you know, the Cinderella complex that we all know, you know, be giving girls a pink and boys a blue. I think we need to try and mix it up a bit, you know, and give the girls the, you know, the, 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 the cargo um, Lego set, you know. Mm. And it, it's, it's about mindset, Mila, you know, I think, um, and, and personally, you know, I think, for females, they need to put themselves out there. They need to be visual and they need to be seen as being role models, which is what I, I try and do. 
you know, link up with others as well, you know, whether there's, um, for example, I belong to an organization called TechHer. Again, it's sponsored by Microsoft. And again, it's a very powerful medium forum. You know, it's giving opportunities to females that they didn't think they had perhaps and giving and touching on concepts, especially with, you know, sort of current modern emerging technologies like AI and um, blockchain, you know, uh, which is really in, uh, in, instrumental in what, where we are in our, you know, in our careers. Yeah, and just on that, I know from a previous conversation we had, you gave me an example there of um, a, a scenario that occurred where women kind of, and, and I was shocked at what you told me, so where there was an opportunity offered to, to a group of women and the majority didn't um, jump at it. So did you want to just share that? Oh, yes, yes, of course. So. So basically, let's do the Tech Her Forum. Um, um, Jane Pitt, wonderful um, who, who, founder of this um, initiative. So they were doing um, Azure uh, Cloud Fundamentals, really. Um, and there were 52 of us, chosen females, all very much in the IT, from project managers to developers. Um, and we were given the opportunity to do a full day for free in a beautiful, swanky five-star hotel in London um, to, to do this course. And this lovely Maria from, from Sweden came and taught us, brilliant trainer very much you know taught us all the concept of cloud and at the end we were all offered to do the exam to, to you know to get the the course and of the 52 women Leela how many and I know you know the answer but I've already spoken to you but of the 52 women all of us had the same training best opportunity to do the exam of the 52 women how many people took the exam so I will tell you five five ladies took the potentially took the exam and of the five I think perhaps four but, but what it is a lot of that because it was a long day and a lot of them perhaps had other, you know, responsibilities like, you know, childcare or having to feed their family. But I just thought, you know, if there were 52 men in that room, <laughs> I'm sure the ratio would have been slightly higher. Absolutely, would have, yeah. you know. <laughs> There would have been 52 men taking the exam, right? And all of them to get the top marks. And I was one of them. I was one of those ladies, you know, that took the exam and I literally scraped a path. But actually, you know what? I'm glad I did it because, you know, a couple of weeks later, my memories would have gone, you know, and I would have been in less uh, capable position, you know, of passing the exam. Mm. So again, again, it's about a mindset. It, 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 you know, it, it's what is important at the end of the day. And I think for us, as I said before, I think it is really important for us to try and push ourselves, not only for ourselves, but for the people, for our children, for our daughters, you know, and for the, for the next generation. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we've made a bit of a, a bit of an impact, but I think it will be the next generation you know, the, the digital natives generation that will really make a breakthrough. Um, and we've still got to keep pushing for this. Yeah, and, and I mean, just going back to that scenario, from your perspective personally, if you hadn't taken that exam and chose to leave it and go home, reflecting back on that, let's say a couple of weeks later, what would you have been thinking? Personally, I would have been a bit disappointed, to be honest. I would have been very disappointed. Even though I was, you know, I was totally out of my comfort zone, you know, I mean, I haven't done exams for years, really, especially, you know, in the technical aspects of cloud and all those concepts. That, that quite. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, I kind of felt that that would be in the best position to do it there and then and just get it over with. And even if we didn't pass, you know, we didn't have anything to lose. But it's that, you know, it, it, and I, I'm not, I hope to think that I'm quite a confident person, but not everyone is, you know, and I, and I think it's to support others to let them have that confidence, you know, let them be, feel secure not being in their comfort zone. You know? mm. Yeah, and I think it's also, because, you know, I hear a lot of, of noise around what well, companies should do more mm -hmm. to encourage diversity and encourage um, women up the career ladder. And I absolutely advocate and agree with that. But I think it's also about, those individuals who want to see that and want to be a part of that also need to step up and take that action. It's yeah. not about putting it onto somebody else. So, well, they need to do that. They need to do this. It's, well, what are you going to do? There's a saying actually, I've heard and many a time it's, um, well, it's not a saying, but it was a scenario where um, a professor asked a room of people, how many of you want to experience change in your life? And everyone put their hand up. Okay. Now that change could be just being, having a better life, being a better person, whatever it might be. But then he asked, well, how many of you prepared to change? 
Mm. And the number of people who put up their hand is, is far, far less. And I think it's, you know, people want the change. They want to see new things, but how many are actually prepared to do something about it? Yes. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And that's where I think the courage comes in and, and the ability to say, right, I'm taking that, that personal leadership responsibility. I want to influence my outcomes and yeah. create something different. Yeah, I think also as well, it's about the environment, the workplace as well. You know, I think people need to feel sort of psychological safety. You know, they feel they, they need to feel an environment. And that's perhaps up to leaders, really, to make sure that the, the, the workplace is safe. And that's inclusive, you know, to encourage sort of good networking and communication. You know, we talk about unconscious bias. There is a lot of unconscious bias. You know, a lot of um, um, senior leaders will probably want to have their successes look like them or be like them, you know. But it's, it's, it's about also allowing for different perspectives, you know. IT is not so technical these days, you know. But we, you don't have to be a really big, strong developer. There's a lot of low-code um, methodologies that you can use. It's not even as quite nerdy and boring as people, you know, the, the sky is, is open to new, innovative and collaborative and, and, you know, creative ways of thinking. And so that's where women come in. They make fantastic, you know, um, leaders and, and, and have ideas and perspectives that need to be brought in, you know. We talk about AI, for example. We, we want to really get rid of all this sort of bias. You know, we want to be their part of the decision making from earlier on, you know. So yeah by the future direct generations no so totally why. totally agree and, I, and you know it's so true you want a, a diverse um view of your business and how you're going to take it forward you need to have a diverse management team you need to have a diverse range of people in the organization who can bring those ideas to the table right mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so tell me what what reasons would you would you give to encourage more women then into into the technology industry what kind of well, things yeah well i think i think there's three things actually i think we're actually quite well paid you know in in the it industry and so that's quite nice we are now because of the whole mobile remote working we can offer lots of flexibility you know and the nine to five jobs that we were probably quite familiar with are now probably going to be changed quite drastically and so for that you are able to have be a family you know you can bring up children i mean myself i'm a, I'm a mother of two beautiful children who've always known a working mum and of course you know juggled many plates through my career but actually you know I've been able to do it I've been able to sort of plan a career for myself and I think you know it was quite quite difficult in the early stages but um, but I think now more than ever it's it's the opportunities are there for us you know I think women are really can you know start smashing these glass ceilings and so I would encourage them you know for good pay for flexibility and also for personal um, reward, you know, you get a good feeling of being like I am doing with this, you know, this app. It's an amazing feeling to be able to create and produce things and, and, and see the rewards of your efforts. And you get nice. that. Yeah, very nice. And what about visibility and, and being able to inspire? What, how important is that? No, I think that's very important. And I think people like Melinda Gates and some of the heads of the CEOs, you know, Meg Whitman, for example, from HP, They've done a tremendous job, you know, and I think the books that they read, I mean, I, I'm very, very fond of Melinda Gates. I think what she's done, you know, her, even her book, Lifting Women, it's been incredible. And, um, and I really love all, the, all her initiatives that she's done to try and lift, you know, for example, female startups, for example, a billion dollars worth of um, funding to do that. And I think more companies should do that. You know, I think they should try and really encourage the female economy, you know. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, absolutely. And what about, um, I know you touched on it earlier, mentorship. How important do you think that is? I think it's very, very important. I think, you know, I think from my perspective, I think, you know, mentors should be approachable. They need to be able to connect with people and not everyone can offer or has the time for it. So if you haven't, I do believe that, you know, you should reach out for it, whether you like, go to someone like yourself, who's incredibly talented, um, and get that people who has that people focus, you know, has the emotional intelligence to work with their clients. Because I think, you know, it, it's, it's quite a, a big world out there. And I think sometimes having that support mechanism is, is just totally crucial. And if you can offer it back, like I, I would also, I'm doing, it's, it's very valuable to your mentee. Mm, no, I absolutely agree. I think it is, it's about, um, to some extent, it's, it's getting clear. Like you talked earlier on about having, a role, having role models and also having mentors. 
Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays, if you want to be able to stand out from the crowd and you want to move up the career ladder, then it's important to start getting clear on that and, and building that circle of advocates, the sponsors, the people who've got your back, who are in your corner to, to support you and to encourage you, but also to talk about you to other people, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I mean, I've worked with you and you've done, you've given me some amazing tips, especially, you know, my CV, my branding, and I really value that. And I've also, when I was at Bibi, I was given a, a leadership coach, Nicola Cardi, who is absolutely fabulous with me as well. And we, we meet every couple of weeks and we have a session and the guidance that she does, she doesn't tell me what to do, but you know, she, she makes me use my ideas really to help me um, unblock challenges, you know, that I'm having at the time. And I really, you know, and a lot of people think, oh, God, what's the point? You know, why, why pay extra for coaching? I don't need to do things like that. I can look online. But believe me, you know, sometimes, you know, you go down a certain path and you, you can't see the bigger picture because you're so focused on that particular path, you know, which is where I think a good mentor or a coach comes in because they can unblock, unblock those paths. Mm. Yeah, I, I do find it interesting. Um, I actually put a post out on this earlier this week about... Um, the, the mindset that a lot of employees have of personal development and growth and the conversations I often have is that they're not prepared to invest in themselves yeah. and it's a case of well a company should pay why because they're benefiting and I believe of course they benefit indirectly because you show up as a better version of yourself so of course the company will see some of that benefit yeah. But ultimately, whether it's coaching, um, mentoring, personal development, growth, training of some sort, you're the recipient of that, right? So you're the one who benefits ultimately from that. And you get to take that wherever you go. Um, so, and also, you know, even looking at many of the clients I've worked with, they every single one of them will account some of the working with me towards the fact they've had a pay rise they've all had a promotion or moved on to a new job that's taken them the next step up the career ladder. Mm -hmm. So it's a return on investment, I think, is, is, is how I see it. Yes, definitely, definitely. And I think, you know, these kind of ways now that we're going to be numerate, uh, compensated is going to change, you know, the rewards the packages that uh, companies will be offering and things like personal development will be very much key, I think. You know, you know mm -hmm. rather than getting a, a, a payment, you perhaps get a coach or training but, but as you said you're right you don't it shouldn't necessarily be that up to the company to have to pay for it i think it's how much you value it i mean even myself for example you know i know that as part of being at bibi i was offered nicola's uh, service but I've, I've continued to use her services because i thought they were so valuable to me um you know to go forward with my career yeah absolutely absolutely and tell me a little about about the award you won last year i know you you got an award for cio london's prediction panel in 2019 so how did that come about yes that was quite fun actually yeah i was um i was asked to um in my capacity at bibi uh, sort of like a, the ci cio information officer level i was asked to to do a a prediction for 2020 actually and um, yeah, I did a bit of research and, I, and my prediction was really was about rather than artificial intelli intelligence, it was about augmented intelligence. So it's sort of like, you know, the HoloLens or, 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 or technology that is going to work alongside us. And in a way, it's kind of happened. You know, if you look about what's happened with COVID, not that I was predicting it at all, but we are seeing many aspects of that, you know, in our, in our lives, you know, even I, in, internet of things, devices, you know, um, the, the, the Apple watches and the ringer at the doorbell more and more of that stuff will start to permeate I think within our culture and mm -hmm. not only with for fun you know it will also be within our workplace um, you, you know look, Microsoft has introduced power apps and power, you know there, there are lots of different um, ways of automating things and using devices to make our lives easier um, and so that was what it was all about really rather than bring your own sort of device it was kind of bring your own enhancement <laughs> which is the, and they all liked it. And that basically I was crowned the CIO queen or something for a couple of months. <laughs> I've given an Amazon show for the privilege. Plus a swanky meal, I must have to say, it was very nice at the Ned in London. Lovely, very nice. lovely indeed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, just to kind of to wrap up, what, what thoughts and ideas would you like to leave us with and share with the audience? 
I mean, I think, to be honest, I think in all areas of work and life, women are smashing, without doubt, they're smashing those glass ceilings and they're making remarkable process. And I think it's really key as we've, we've touched on some of the, those concepts today, you know, about, you know, mindfulness, mentorship, limit the unconscious bias, you know, inspiring, being a really good role model, having, you know, leading with integrity, vision and passion, and really being visible, you know, encouraging that positive growth mindset. I think it's really important, Leela, that we try not only for ourselves, but for the next generation to continue to encourage girls to be curious and to seek answers to the mysteries around them that, you know, that other people so that they become the problem solvers of tomorrow, really. You know, there's so many glowing examples of female heroines, you know, that have demonstrated this curiosity, you know, and I've mentioned a few earlier on. But, you know, I think it's thanks to them that women and girls worldwide can dream big, you know, they can live with fewer physical and emotional constraints. So I think we should be saluting them all and joining them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, no, thank you so, so much. And and before we go, I'd just like to say as well, I wish you all the best with the, the app, this new iPub Beacon app that you are putting out there. I think it's so timely and so relevant. And what I will ensure is that your contact details are in the show notes. So for any of our listeners who'd like to get in touch and learn more about what you're doing there and the innovation that you're all about, they can reach out to you directly. So once again, Danette, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do subscribe to the show so you don't miss any future episodes. And remember to leave a review telling us about your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most. And do share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on the importance of personal branding when it comes to your career advancement. And also ensure that others can benefit from these invaluable insights from many inspirational leaders. I will be eternally grateful. And if you are looking to earn more money, to get promoted, to secure your next role and advance your career, and would like me to support you personally on that journey to get you there, then reach out to me and let's arrange a chat. Alternatively, why don't you check out my personal branding launchpad, a group training and mentoring program. Finally, if you'd like to connect with me directly, then do reach out and direct message me on LinkedIn. You can find the link as well as any other resources mentioned in the show notes. I'll see you next time.